Most AI sucks. And I'm quite frankly overwhelmed with the amount of AI that's been hitting the internet. There is this new thing called perplexity that is worth looking at. So in a rare video for me, I'm gonna be looking at how a product launch could be decided by the tool perplexity.ai. So this is a prompt that was built by John Aspinall. He's been all over this. He tests every new AI tool. And quite frankly, I usually ignore the amount of things he sends my way because there's just so many of them and I'm like, ugh. He got me to watch this video and show me his prompt and I, I gotta say, I like it. Here's what I like about perplexity. They cite sources, which is gonna make it pretty hard for the deep state and all of the bad actors to put their bulk mind control stuff into the AI prompts because there's literally sources here embedded directly into the content. I don't think any other AI is doing it this way. That's a big deal. When we look at the answers to this question that's you know, been asked, what are the top five emerging categories on Amazon in 2024? Health and personal care. And right here, it cites multiple sources. Beauty and personal care, cites a source there. Home and kitchen, cites Jungle Scout, sports and outdoors, cites Jungle Scout again, and a Helium 10 on the technology and electronics. Now that's a pretty broad spectrum of, you know, emerging categories, right? So not really actionable data, it's curious data. It's, uh, you know, it's interesting, but it's not actionable. All right, so I like creatine gummies what can I do when creating a product to launch on Amazon to make it better, right? So, you know, I, the list was interesting, it was semi-actionable, but now, like, how here is it valid data? I don't know, let's find out. So what if I wanted to make it a better value prop, make it taste better? So this is the sort of stuff that you guys see in a lot of the, the content where, you know, people are saying, hey, if you wanna launch a product on Amazon, just take a current one and make it better. And that's like one of the easiest things you can do when launching products on Amazon. So can AI tell us how to make it better? There it goes off to the races. And as we scroll through this, it's got some sources. Here's the answer to successfully launch creatine gummies on Amazon in 2024, you need to focus on several key areas, product quality, value prop, taste, and branding. Makes sense, that's a summary statement, sure. In here, enhancing the product, so scientific backing. Ensure your creatine gummies are backed by credible scientific research. Highlight any clinical trials or studies that support the efficacy of creatine in your product. So here it's citing Engage Bay, I've never heard of them, eight winning supplement marketing strategies for 2024. And they discuss like the strategies to use. Ingredient transparency, so yeah, this is huge. I would say even in putting it in a main image, you know, part of our CTR, Main image hack, we always put the ingredients for sure. So having that listed out would be important. Quality control. I think people just assume there's quality. So it's, it's really hard to prove quality. It's really hard to suggest that, right? Especially with a supplement where, you know, how do you prove it works or not? Very difficult. Improving the taste. This is something that I would say probably would have a bigger impact because it's immediate, right? So a supplement's results take weeks, if not months, but taste is immediate. And that's an important thing. Like if you look at like the apple cider gummies, what they did to make their product viable, they made it taste better. Flavor innovation, experiment with popular and unique flavors that appeal to your target audience. Consider natural fruit flavors or combinations that mask the taste of creatine effectively. Sweeteners, use natural sweeteners. And it gives specifics, stevia or mug fruit to enhance taste without adding sugar, appealing to health conscious consumers. I don't know about you, but somebody eating gummies probably isn't that health conscious, they just wanna be. Value proposition, dosage and efficacy, additional benefits, eco-friendly packaging, eh, who cares about that. Branding and marketing, brand identity, target audience, define your target audience clearly, whether it's fitness enthusiasts, athletes, general health conscious individuals, tailor your branding with resonate values and needs. This is a critical component because you have to understand who your customer avatar is. I'm in many videos quoting Dan Kennedy where I talk about your three-time divorced truck driver. That's a very specific customer avatar and if you were selling to that individual, you'd know exactly how to market them. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just gonna sell this to anybody with teeth or I'm just gonna sell this product to anybody that wants to worry about their health. And that's too generic. It's, it doesn't resonate with anybody because that sort of message is lost when there's other messages that are more 
specific. Packaging design, ensure your packaging is eye-catching. Use clear, concise labels. Uh, easy to understand information about the product's benefits, usage, instructions. Market strategies, content marketing, create valuable and relevant content that educates consumers about the benefits. Honest testimonials, sure. All right, so now we gotta get way more specific. My ICP is a woman in her 20s to 30s who is healthy, likes to stay active, has an income of 100K plus. Build me a product for creatine gummies specifically for her. And now we're getting some very specific requests in. So the premium formulation, micronized creatine monohydrate for optimal absorption. That's very specific. Added benefits, infused with B vitamins for energy and biotin for hair, skin, and nail health, which is something that women who are healthy in their 20s and 30s would care about. Natural ingredients, so we covered that in the previous prompt. Delicious flavors, refreshing options like peach, mango, and berry burst. Now you have a very specific like, okay, I'm gonna get a creatine gummy that's peach mango, because that's what a woman in her late 20s would want. Convenient dosage, two gummies. Package and design, sleek and modern, so minimalist design with a matte finish glass jar. Interesting. I don't know if I would do glass, by the way. Soft pastels with gold accents for a premium feminine touch. Now you got your color palette already suggested, pre-selected. Transparency, clear portion on the packaging to showcase the gummies. I don't know why they're pushing eco-friendly so much. Nobody cares about that. Brand strategy, name, elevate. Tagline, elevate your performance naturally. Now this, obviously you'd have to like, you know, ask the AI to pull up, you know, is there a trademark? What what would be an untrademarked name for this? It'd be very interesting for us to do a follow-up. In fact, I kind of actually want to do that. So I, I've got some, you know, more things in the prompt here, but let's do a follow-up. Uh, find me a brand name for the creatine gummies that is not currently trademarked. And it's okay to use a misspelling. And I misspelled the word misspelling. So let's see what it does with that. Creatine candy, muscle morsels, gummy gains, chewable powder. You know, these are pretty terrible, but Elevate, not terrible. Some of, most of these are pretty bad. Energy gummies, fitness chomps, Active 8, oh, Active 8, nice. Uh, but Elevate, that's pr pretty good. So if we do, if we go to Google, type in trademark lookup, and then go search the database to see if there's a trademark for this. And no results found. Promising. Elevate. You know, you can play with the misspelling and see how it goes. So that was interesting. Is AI ready to pick your product? Not yet, but it might be better than you trying to go and just search what's trending, right? By using AI, we were able to create a justified case study of whether to do creatine gummies. We could look at this from a lot of different angles. We have a, a potential launch plan. I think that perplexity has deserved its subscription. I, I think that's the, that's the layer that I'm gonna go with here. Would I rather launch a product doing something that I personally understand versus using data first and you know learning the sector? I personally would stick to what I understand. So when I was growing up, taught chess lessons. I could tell you everything there is about a chess board. I could tell you everything there is about chess pieces and why triple weighted chess pieces are cooler and why and why vinyl boards need algebraic notation and which clock I like and prefer and why I like the touch clocks better than the push button ones and whatnot. I would have a huge edge. I wouldn't need any data. I could go do my own thing and just ignore data, right? And that's the thing about being within your own ICP. You can build a product for what you like. The challenge is you don't know how big that niche is. And that's where data comes in to, to reveal so what I do is I take my knowledge, I'll pick a product first, then I'll use data to justify it. And if data can't justify it, then I'll go choose a different product. But if you try and, and look at trends, you're gonna end up selling fidget spinners and you're gonna buy a pallet of fidget spinners from China and then everybody else is gonna buy a pallet of fidget spinners from China and then everybody's selling fidget spinners and then you have no profit and you're toast because everybody could get the same product super dirt cheap. That's the downside to following trends. And every single product research tool all fall into those challenges. But I do really like perplexity sourcing, sources specifically. So that's something that I haven't seen from AI before. 
uh, where it gives me direct links from the actual content articles it was using. I can see how recent they were. Quite frankly, you could write a college paper with this, cite your sources super fast, do everything that you ever got taught in the education system, for what that's worth, and be able to use AI to get somewhere with some merited justification. Now, whether it will work, jury is out on that. How much time did it save you? Quite a bit though, quite a bit of time did this tool save, but it's still not like good enough. I can't just like run on autopilot with AI. Not good enough for that. And you still need to know what questions to ask. So John Aspinall, who was the pilot asking the questions down the line for the creatine gummies, this was his idea. He knew what to ask because he wanted to go a layer deeper. He knew what the consumer was looking for. He's been talking to Amazon sellers all the time trying to help them understand you know, what they're doing in their journey. We all know what the common FAQs are. We all know where do I start? How do I get going? This product, where do I buy it from? AI can answer those questions. Now, can it help you select a creatine gummy manufacturer? I don't know. So I just typed into the AI in perplexity, give me five proven creatine gummy manufacturers and their info. So we got Trustworks, specializes in private label manufacturing of creatine gummies. Nutra One, Sequoia Biotechnologies, holistic company. Now the question is, is that like, do they actually make it or is this like a brand? So now I gotta go find out. I was hoping for their info. Uh, let's let's see. Well, that does have the word manufacturing in it. That's potential. So Trustworks, let's go to their website. Yep, that fits the bill. You know, sometimes an image is more powerful than anything else like look, look at that I already know just by seeing a blank bottle like this these guys will private label me a gummy no question gummies right there on the site in the subcategory way better than Google this 100% perplexity is gonna replace Google no question right so if I typed into Google right now creatine gummies manufacturer what would have come up and so if we look at this Trustworks right there it did come up SMP Nutra that came up so if we click over here it lands me right there fuel for muscles and stamina man I've been doing some um, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and, and I, I can't believe how much I wish my stamina was better than it is maybe I need to start taking some of these <laughs> I think that might be my biggest takeaway from this exercise. So hopefully this was a helpful test, save you some time from trying to test AI yourself. You can ignore those hundreds of emails everybody's sending out and doing webinars on AI. And I just, it's a lot of noise. It's so much noise. You could, you could probably just go to sleep for six months and, and wait for somebody else to crack the code and then to tell you which AI to use in six months. That's what I would do. But I do predict perplexity will be one of those AIs that will surpass and replace Google search and all those things. If you look back in time, sometimes it's good to look backwards to look forwards. In backwards in time, Google was where everybody started their product search. But I don't know, like five or six years ago, Amazon overcame that. Now Amazon's the number one place to start your product search. AI will eventually replace Amazon for the number one place to start product search, which is why Amazon's working on Rufus and whatever other AIs they're doing. And we'll see some of that get embedded, but time will tell. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Type in AI perplexity into the comments. That'll help me rank it with the algorithm. Thank you in advance. Check out these other videos about product launches and optimization. Click here and thank you for watching.